This week on Trending in Tesla, Sandy Monroe's team tears down the Cybertruck battery and what they found will leave you confused. Plus, Reuters leaks that Tesla has moved on from the cheaper Model 2 project. Of course, Elon scoffs at the idea, but there's so much there to unpack. Let's get right into this with the Cybertruck battery because we are seeing Sandy Monroe and his team opening up the battery and it's not what we expected. This is a big deal. This is a really big deal and we're learning from what they found in this teaser video that Monroe and Associates posted. The 4680 cells that are inside the Cybertruck are half empty. So of course there's been so much talk about the disappointment that initially came from Cybertruck's range. The mm -hmm. first tests were showing 250 miles of range. It seemed like Tesla maybe fine-tuned some of the software. They got that up to the lower 300s and of course well below the 500 that was initially expected. And then they promised the range extender to get you 440 miles. Which I've always said <laughs> seemed like an afterthought. Absolutely. It's nothing like what Tesla's ever done with any sort of battery pack where they've added something that visually takes away, especially from a vehicle that really is designed to, to visually really stand out and be unique and then pop something in the back that cuts your bed uh, by a third is a big deal. And we're seeing all these other electric trucks now coming out that have much better range yes. than the Cybertruck as yes. well. Yes, Cybertruck's got 123 kilowatt hour battery pack on board. It is the least amount of range for that battery pack size. And of course the efficiency numbers seem like they're, they're decent, but that range is really small for 2024 from Tesla. So let me describe the teaser that everyone is talking about right now. Basically the cells appear to be organized in modules separated by beams, which means that this is not a cell to structure design. The design is different. The capacity on board of the room inside this pack is also significantly limited in that I want to show you something here. So a pill bottle, believe it or not, it is almost exactly a 4680 size, meaning 80 millimeters tall, 46 millimeters wide. In fact, this one is about 47 millimeters wide. So we're talking almost identical to this. Now they had this in there, but the amount of room essentially is a second average pill bottle. So this is the amount of room that's empty. So we're, we're talking again, a significant amount of open space inside this uh, battery pack design. So people are now assuming, is the range going to be closer to 500 miles or was this left for a cost cutting measure? Is this an afterthought? And there's just so many things. So to get many into this. questions. Yeah. I wish that we could talk to somebody and ask these questions that someone, they have to respond. Like <laughs> what is no, happening there's here? There's no PR team. So you know, what's interesting is Wes, who's Cybertruck's lead engineer, he commented to Holmar's blog, who called this a half empty battery pack from this finding. He said, I'd say it's half full. So is that implying there's much more to come and maybe the range extender that has kind of been pushed back to the end of Q3 into Q4, maybe that doesn't actually come to market in that fashion or in that sense. Is this going to be something that Tesla seamlessly mm. uh, integrates into the battery pack? So why did they not do this with the initial Cybertrucks yeah. coming out? Did they not have like enough batteries? Were they not able? It could be a number of things, right? I think the battery itself, the cost itself, we already know how expensive this initial run of trucks is going to be and is ending up. So this would increase the price, this would increase the weight, and maybe they weren't there or ready to be able to pump this out. And Or is it just gonna be like the cyber beast? Yeah, that, that could be something that, you know, they, they do that as well. We know that this truck, of course, requires towing and it requires a lot more load on these batteries. Some people are saying maybe this is just to, to allow for some thermal control inside the batteries and give it some breathing room, essentially. But I, I'm not buying that. I think there's more to it, especially based on what the lead engineer for Cybertruck himself kind of teased by saying, I call it half full. So... I think there's just a lot more into it than we know. It's really weird. And I go back to thinking about when we were at the event mm -hmm. where they were delivered, Elon didn't talk about the battery, like in terms of like the range. Yes. At all during that event, <laughs> which was really weird. It was really strange. Everyone at that event immediately was like, hold on, range. It's all we care about. This is all we care about with an electric truck coming from Tesla. And it was not mentioned until you went online, saw the battery pack was there, saw what the range was. Yes, I think maybe Tesla thought this is going to have enough demand initially that people will pay the premium, take this initial hit in range. And we know how it goes when it comes to these kind of things, right? With early adopters, it that's kinda, the price you pay. Yes, it every sort of single sucks time. to be an yeah. early adopter. And we have, like, we're able to configure, we could configure yeah. right now ours, and we're sort of holding off. Yeah. And now it makes me want to hold off 
and see what happens with yeah. everything. I'm, I'm curious what you guys think. If you have a reservation for Cybertruck or if you are an early adopter, how do you feel about this? I, I'm super curious. And I also wanted to, a lot of us, myself included, are not like, we don't know a ton about batteries. Right. I'm learning so much as I follow Tesla and electric vehicles about it. But the history of kind of like what Tesla has done yeah. with their batteries is really interesting because it kind of goes back to like if we start out with our Model X and our Model S, what did we initially yeah. have in there? So those were 18650 cells. I've actually got the actual 18650 cell right here. So we're talking about 65 millimeters tall and 18 millimeters wide. So much smaller form factor. This has been reiterated. The cell chemistry has improved over time. The latest Model Xs have this exact form factor, but they've got more energy density, which is how the range has increased over time. We thought we're going to get these 4680 again, almost identical in size. And he's holding up a pill bottle <laughs> if you are listening to this as the podcast. Yes. So this is essentially what the Model Y beginning in 2022 started getting. They've further built on that and had a newer version of the 4680s inside the Cybertruck. But again, Tesla has never left an empty space equivalent to a second 4680 on top of it. And that's exactly what we have right now. That's really interesting. So then we go to 2020 battery day. Yeah. And that's when he kind of talked about these 4680s. And that's he right. talked about... Oh, what was it exactly? Like one side of them having... Yeah, a dry electrode process was going to be involved. It was going to make it much more efficient. And of course, it was also going to be more affordable. And there was also a silicone anode that was going to be built into these batteries. When 2022 came, these Model Ys got those 4680s. Didn't seem like that was the case. People and, complained about this. I remember yeah. people complaining about like charging speed, Charging speed slow. curves. And, and we were seeing that with Cybertruck, which again, mm -hmm. hints to uh, maybe it's not quite there yet. And Tesla wants to be all in on being able to get that there. We know 800 volt architecture also comes in in allowing 350 kilowatt mm -hmm. charging speeds. So when you have all of these into play, it tells me maybe that's another reason why Cybertruck's speed is not quite fast when it comes to charging. And that 350 is not there because it is going to be there in the next iteration, maybe next year. And, you know, who knows what Tesla is with pricing at that point. And then, of course, the complaints will come with early adopters but that is literally, we've been in this game for so long with Tesla. Yeah. 2012, 13 Model S, 16 Model X, we got 18 Model 3. We got every one of those being early ones. And we saw this play out over and over. Yeah, I feel like we need to hear from Elon. <laughs> we, need, we need to hear, not just from Elon, but we need to hear more from Tesla on what, what the plans are at this point yeah. on this. Um, there's so much going on, though, I feel like. In the last like day, like Elon's gone on Twitter and just been on a rant on all the stuff <laughs> with Brazil. And we have to talk about this $25,000 Tesla that's supposedly getting canned according to Reuters. Yeah. And Reuters seems to like to <laughs> spread a lot of rumors. Yeah, there was another big story they, they leaked that was partially true mm -hmm. back in October. I forget exactly yeah. what it was, but um, Reuters seems to have someone on the inside that leaks them just enough info to make for a great headline, but it doesn't necessarily translate into, into fact. So we know that the robo taxi, of course, has been a huge thing for Tesla and the model two, which is going to be the most affordable car they ever make, at least for now, is something that has been kind of the mission statement of Tesla, right? So for them to actually move away from the model two, seems like it's a huge deal. Reuters claims they had three sources internally. This was a hands-on meeting and Elon Musk led this meeting by talking about priority has shifted. Elon responds on X to Reuters' article saying they're lying again. So <laughs> we're left here wondering. And then Franz also spoke on it too, right? Yeah, he said, stay tuned. Yeah. So lots of confusion. What is going on? I know when we go back to the book that came out on Elon, he talked a little bit about RoboTaxi mm -hmm. and how he wanted it to basically be the same vehicle, not have a steering wheel, be completely like driverless. And this is something that would compete with like Uber, but it would be a driverless vehicle, kind of like what Waymo has going on. And right inside now. the book, and this book has been, of course, authorized by Elon. This inside the book, it said that this is going to be a Cybertruck inspired design. August 8th is when we get to see exactly what this robo taxi 
autonomous vehicle looks like without the steering wheel, without the driving uh, features and uh, physical gear inside. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be all passenger based. But also, what does that mean for people who have bought FSD in hopes of being able to put it inside the fleet? Is this going to be something that possibly supersedes that? And are they completely scrapping the $25,000 car? Like, Elon says wrong, but then they are saying they are going to announce the robo-taxi. Yeah. So is it going to be two vehicles or is it going to be one? I'm still confused on that. That's been where the confusion has come in. We always thought that it was going to be one vehicle that was going to be... Originally. Share. Originally, yes. And then they said <laughs> two. <laughs> yeah. As of like January, I think they said that the $25,000 car would start in Texas. At the end of yeah. 2025, they would start getting that out. But now all this stuff is coming out. Yeah. So it's a little bit confusing on what exactly is happening. Yeah. Tesla's got a lot of, a lot of big... Big secrets up its sleeve, I think. Yes. So, <laughs> and of course, on this report, their stock went down a couple of percent because now people are thinking, hey, is this not going to come to market? This is going to be what makes them money and becomes a mass market vehicle and affordable. But I honestly think it is coming to market. And I do think we'll see it this year at the end of this year, independent of the August 8th event, which is the robo taxi. So, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on all this. Um, one is we recently made a video with FSD, the new version 12.3, and it is the first version of full self-driving where I'm like, I'm excited about it. Like yeah. I would drive with this every single day. It's really, really good. Yeah. Um, it was shocking to me how good it was because the previous iter iterations I was like not a fan of. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. Are you really going to like charge me to basically be your lab rat? That's how I felt about it. But this one, I'm like, this is good. Yeah. And th that's what I love about our channel because we're kind of straight to it. We'll tell you. We love Tesla, but we'll tell you if it sucks. And it did suck for, yeah. for what we expected to get out of $12,000. This go around, is it worth $12,000? I'm getting a lot closer to it. 12000 is a lot, but I, yeah. I'm getting closer to, to that number. You can do a monthly though. Like yes. what is it? Like $200 a $200 month? $200 a month, yeah. Yeah. So that is like an option for it as well. But the but. point is that I think for the first time, we both see that this is going to come to market. Mm -hmm. This is going to make incredible noise in, in the space of autonomy. And we did Waymo, which is a completely different setup there with, of course, mapped roads. This is more visual based and it learns on the go and it responds on the, at the moment. This is why I think that FSD is really, really close. Tesla opening it up to every single Tesla owner in the United States. Mm -hmm tells you they believe that it's close. Now, of course, regulations, that's something else. August 8th, where will you be? It's going to be one of those <laughs> things where we're all going to be, you know, tuned in. Hopefully, if it's an event, I'm hoping I'll be there, but you never know. And then they're also looking at getting a version out to the legacy Model S owners. FSD version, yep, yeah, for, for legacy Model S owners that had hardware that supported it, but maybe not all of the hardware that you find in the newer builds. So it, it is pretty neat to see that older Model S and X owners, maybe not the ones without cameras way back in 2012 or 13, but maybe the 15, 16 models that had cameras. Can, yeah, can they'll be able to get this. them something. Mm -hmm. it, it's a very interesting thing with full self-driving because it's expensive. And for people like us who have had it and then sold, gone on to sell those cars and you get nothing for it when it's not at you know where we all hoped it would be so mm -hmm. you know it's kind of a hard thing because there's a lot of people that are like i would never pay for this or maybe they had tried previous iterations that were not good and it felt sort of like like you're getting gypped a little bit yeah. you know i mean there's been some lawsuits towards tesla over it there's a recent lawsuit where the driver was on autopilot he was also on his phone tesla actually paid him out i was kind of hoping that it would we would see what would happen with this mm -hmm. it was interesting because the lawyers took a different tactic because again he was on his phone where they said that auto that tesla knew autopilot had this flaw where it would drive into, into the median into the yeah. medians and they still like had it out there and also that Elon was like over hyping yeah. autopilot. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of curious to see where this would go, but then Tesla just paid them out. They just said. paid them out. This is in the last couple of days. This was an Apple engineer that owned the Model X in yeah. Silicon Valley, went into this barrier, lost his life. They found out through the telemetrics that were on board there that he was on his phone and then through also, you know, being able to get his cell phone records. But Tesla paid the family that, that lost, you know, the, their husband here and, and their father. What's interesting too is that Tesla paid them out probably because with what's happening with full self-driving, what's happening with the robo-taxi, they just want to move that along mm -hmm. and kind of bury 
this trial is what I think. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. This happens at the same time as the free trial comes out. So yeah, maybe it's not a good look for Tesla. For what to kind take of trial? <laughs> yeah. They'd rather have that trial than the other exactly. trial. You have to be sensitive to these type of matters at the same time. So the other thing to think about is if Tesla does not do their $25,000 car, they're really missing out on this huge market. Here we have Kia that's just announced their new EV3 that they're yeah. gonna be coming out with this year. And it looks, it looks great. It looks really nice and sporty. Yep, they teased it as a concept in 2020, at the end of 23. They're saying July of this year, they'll unveil it. Again, the EV3, squish down version of EV9, has all the tech and features, starts below $30,000, available next year. And they have a lineup, I believe it's the EV2, EV3, four, five, and six all leading up between twenty five dollars to $50,000. So they're absolutely prioritizing on an affordable version very quickly. We know BYD's already had great success doing that as well. So it does make me wonder, but it also makes me think that Tesla is not, is not moving away at all from the Model 2. I don't think so. Or maybe the Model 2 and Robotaxi are really just going to be the same vehicle. Yeah. So... I'm not really sure, but you know, it does make you think twice about it. And then Rivian's doing something <laughs> kind of fun. Now they're also offering wraps. Yes, $5,000. This is a free wrap, a $5,000 value they're offering as a perk to kind of incentivize more sales here on the R1S and the R1T. This is an in-house wrap Rivian is offering. And it is fascinating to see because the wrap industry has taken off. Talking to our friend uh, who has a very successful uh, wrap shop here in Atlanta, and he's talked about it. if you had a chart and you could see how it's increased, it's almost become a dramatic straight spike up from about mm -hmm. 2019 to present day of where wrapping was and how it was perceived just a couple of years ago and how it's almost something you do just like everyone you know, does it now. getting wheels or something. You know, everyone does it. I mean, for it's because I decided compared. to wrap, <laughs> wrap all our cars. Yeah, exactly. Of course, they've dropped prices that are down to like 550 or so a month when you factor in the tax credit. Also, it is a stealth wrap and it's from Expel. Which oh, is, is it? Yeah. Yep, that's the one we had. That's exactly what we had. So I'm excited about that. I think that's a good move for them. Kind of gets people talking about it. I'm excited. It's really fascinating how Tesla, Rivian have kept their paint colors to a, to a minimum, but then increase giving you options while increasing their profit margins. Yeah. And in all the little videos of RJ Scringe, he has a broken arm. Does anyone <laughs> know how he broke his arm? I don't think he broke it. I think he said something. He responded to someone. Oh, he did? What yeah, did he yeah. say? He said it was just some surgery. He's getting old and he had some surgery with the shoulder issues he's had okay. that he wanted to get that fixed. So yeah. All right. Because it was like in a nice little like stabilized cast. Well, your buddy RJ there. is okay. Don't worry. Oh, <laughs> he remembered you at the last event. I know. Oh. I was. I thought, I thought <laughs> that so was excited. so... I was so excited about yeah. that. Um, <laughs> I love Rivian. I think that they do a good job. They do a really good job. Yeah. Now let's move on to someone who might not be doing quite as good a job. We have to talk about what's going on with Fisker. Yes. Yeah. Fisker, uh, we've seen what's happened to their stock price, to their balance sheet, and they've dropped prices dramatically, like fourteen, fifteen thousand mm -hmm. dollar prices where their ocean is now, you know, selling between twenty four to, to thirty thousand, I think. Um, yeah, they've misplaced millions of dollars of customer payments for their ocean. That. Yep. They, they, seems like internally there's some rough times going on. Um, so from what we saw, you know, we saw a really compelling, just the beautiful aesthetically design to that vehicle mm -hmm. and compelling in the sense that would, the features were, were impressive, right? Yeah, I was super excited when they first unveiled it. I was like, I love the design of this. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a good looking vehicle. Um, and then when we met with our friend who had one, it, there was a lot of cool little quirks to it. I didn't get a chance to specifically drive it, but I mm -hmm. remember asking him and he kept saying, oh, future update, future update. Mm -hmm. And then since then, you know, we obviously all have watched the MKBHD <laughs> video and we know what has happened in that update, you know. I mean, they're trying. They're, they're, they're trying, trying, but it shows you how difficult the space is and the ones that have made it through. And it looks like, you know, with Rivian, uh, even Rivian struggling, even though we know what the incredible product that they've put out, um, it shows you that this... EV yeah. space is not for the faint of heart. It's super hard. But Tesla won't even take an ocean as a trade-in anymore. Yeah, that's fascinating to me. I don't know. What do you guys think out there? Do you think Fisker's going to make it? Yeah. 
I would like them to. And then even some of the OEMs are really changing the structure of how they do business. Mm -hmm. BMW just announced a partnership with Rimac yeah. to use some of their high performance batteries. Yeah, they're, they're going to be based out of their Croatia plant there. It's a very sophisticated uh, battery production line that's going to have a pretty significant chunk of it dedicated to BMW as well. We got to see that when we were out in Arizona covering the Pininfarina Batista, which is essentially exactly yeah. what the Rimac Nevera is with just a different skin. So now BMW is basically going to be doing that as well and use those same batteries to have their high performance vehicle. Yeah, we knew that the battery aspect of scaling any EV is always one of the biggest challenges. And that's why Tesla got such an incredible advantage by doing it all in-house and being able to facilitate that themselves. And then obviously be able to scale at the volume they're able to scale because of that. Um, but the likes of BMW and others have obviously tapped into using yeah. other manufacturers. Yeah. One more thing we have to bring up is the Cyber Hammer. We've received ours this week. It's number 114 out of 800. You surprised me. <laughs> By after ordering the last it. Podcast, no, yeah. after the last podcast, I said, hey, if we don't like it, we could resell it. So PJ is like, oh, that's a good idea. He doesn't communicate any of this with me. <laughs> he orders it. It shows up and I'm so excited. I'm like, wow, he actually listened to me. He got it. I'm I'm all stoked. I'm like, we're going to make a bunch of videos. I have all these shorts ideas. And he's like, I already sold it. <laughs> so here's my thinking. You suggested selling it. I looked online and sure enough, it was selling easily for $3,000. So after I confirmed the order, I posted an image of it, said for sale. But you sold it for like $3,000. And when I look online, I saw like $5,000. There are some listings at $5,000, but I think it was consistently selling at three. So people were going for the threes. The fives will stay there for a while. But regardless, I'm like so upset about this <laughs> because only 800 made, only available with referral credit. It's yeah. signed by Franz, like a real signature Stop. on there. Yes, it like is, this but... is this is not something you sell. Like we could have this in this cool like <laughs> acrylic her. plaque on the wall. I wanted to keep this. Yes. So my thinking was you got to, and I made it clear on the sale that this will be open for p pictures and it'll be unused. And that's exactly what it was. We opened it, we got content, you got to shoot pictures and video of it. And he gave it. me literally, he's like, you have today to open it, <laughs> make content, and I have to send it tomorrow. So yeah. <laughs> if you received number 114, that was ours. That was supposed to be mine. So uh, I'm so upset. I'm so upset about this. This I'm is thrilled. like Tesla history. I get it, but it's $3,000. You got bills I, I don't to make, know. yeah? What would you guys, do you guys think it's worth it? I think it's super cool. It does say, though, that it's not for actual use, that it's a piece of exercise equipment on yeah. it. And I thought that was fascinating because... Like it's a sledgehammer, but it's again, it's like not a flamethrower, not yeah. a actual sledgehammer, I guess. But also it's like 12 pounds. So you could kind of do like a good exercise with it if you wanted to use it for that. Well, you got what you wanted. Not I, really. I got what I wanted. Not really. <laughs> I'm so upset about this. I'm bitter. Oh I feel like gosh. this should have been discussed before you went and sold it. Well, it was a surprise. And I think that we could have gotten... Like five thousand. Maybe grand. I didn't discuss it. I think we it. could have gotten more. You'll never be happy with this. So we're just gonna take this argument off camera. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Whose side are you oh on? Oh my gosh. Would you sell it or would you keep it like me? Let us know in the comments down below and settle this for us. <laughs> Hopefully you're on Team Kim. All right, so with all these electric cars coming out, obviously charging is a big deal. And we have some cool chargers coming out. The lamp post is actually going to be deployed in the US now this spring. Is it called lamp post? Well, I call it the lamp post. <laughs> it's actually called the bolt post. Okay. But I think most people know of it as the lamp post because yeah. they're actually able to install it on lamp posts. Yes, this is fascinating. It reminds me of Talking Tesla, which was a podcast I used to listen to 10 years ago. And they had an intro where one of the hosts said, I've seen the future and it's light post charging. And it immediately reminded me of it because when I heard that back in the day, I thought that was fascinating. No one really brought it to fruition, but Volt Post, the name of this company, is bringing this into some major cities across the U.S. That includes Chicago, New York, Detroit, all of them this spring. They didn't disclose exactly how many they're deploying, but what's fascinating about it is just how easy it is to implement this into existing yeah. 
lights in these titties. They can do it in like one to two hours. Yep. Throw these. This really cool looking. Yep. They just throw it on lamp posts, which yep. is why I call it the lamp post charger. <laughs> and there's an app that goes with it. And with the construction too, Kim, you know, we're, we're looking at there's no trenching involved. There's very little to no permitting involved. So as you said, within one to two hours, they can put this in there and get essentially chargers to areas that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get it. They're saying maybe underprivileged areas that don't have the infrastructure built in in their communities. Now for a very low cost, you can implement this into city street lights and have level two charging available. I mean, just being able to park your car on the street and then you have a charger right there. Yeah. Like so cool. It'll I be app based. It. They're saying it's app based as well. So you can then get it online and essentially have it communicate with your car without fumbling for cards and scanning mm -hmm. and so on. And then the, the charger actually comes out and it doesn't like, it's not on the ground. So there's not like a tripping hazard yeah. with it either for people on the sidewalks. It's very, very cool. It makes a lot of sense. Really excited to see this implemented. Yeah. Um, we'll have to go check it out. I feel <laughs> yeah, like we it's need 90 that. degree angle, they say on yeah. it. So again, it gets away from the pedestrians, like you said, 20 feet long as well, because those are always the things, you know, when you do uh, plug in or try to find a charger when you're, you know, on vacation or something that you're, uh, dragging it across the sidewalk and always worried about people tripping on it. This is going to solve that problem by being able to articulate and get out of your way. And if you're iced in 20 feet, you could potentially like pull it if yeah. you have to park behind somebody. Yeah. Um, so a lot, it's a really, it's really cool. EVgo announced this week that they're going to be expanding their plug and go option to over 50 EV models. They have their Auto Plus program, which is kind of like Tesla, where you just plug in and you go, and you don't have to like deal with you know, logging in all your information mm -hmm. and a credit card and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I like where we're seeing the future headed. Yeah. Speaking of charging, you know who keeps this channel charged? Our Patreons. <laughs> I want to thank our Patreons out there because it really helps us put out high quality content and Patreons get behind the scenes access to some footage that is not on YouTube or... Yes, you get exclusive vlogs, never before seen footage, one-on-one -on -one Q and A's with Kim and I, and also early release of this podcast in addition to other goodies on there as well for Patreon members. I want to thank our highest tier members. We have John C. Freed and Maddie Fresh. Yes. And big thanks to our members, James Moorhead, Patrick Stevens, Justin Rodney Flournoy, and Randy Elliott. Also Chris Bale, Alessandro Rossi, Christy Arezzo, Eric Januar, Kim Lutke, and Morton CB. And thank you to all of you guys out there watching. We'll catch you next time.